Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load Excel file with multiple sheets in Azure SQL database. So here is a scenario. What we have here, we have an Excel file with multiple sheets. So let's say this is my Excel file, and then this Excel file has three sheets. One of them is customer, another one is product, and third one is order. So all of these guys are different. The column are different for each of the sheet. So what's going to happen? We are going to load these these three different sheets and uh, uh, the new tables will be created if the table is already existing there so the data will be loaded so we don't have to do anything there uh, now there are some uh, scenarios I was uh, thinking about it uh, that might be you know uh, you are interested right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the sheet names and put into the array in the pipeline but if you would like to have more control maybe tomorrow you will get another sheet there so you don't have to change the pipeline you can put these sheet names in some table use the lookup and get the list of the sheets and then loop through that i might create another video on that topic later so now this video can be very helpful when you have getting set up uh, maybe files every day or maybe you know whenever the file file is dropped in the blob storage you hit the event trigger and then you load this file to the different uh, uh, tables uh, depending on the sheet name so this is all good we uh, don't save we are uh, so you understand that so every day maybe you can get, get this file maybe 20 times different file over the timestamp and all that so your pipeline is going to be able to read that file if you will use uh, the storage even trigger that uh, i have a video on that and uh, then uh, you will be able to load uh, the data from those uh, three sheets uh, now let me go back to the Azure Data Factory here and uh, show you a few things. I have uh, Azure Data Factory set up. I have uh, SQL set up. Uh, so I'm going to show you the, let's open the Azure Data Factory first and uh, then we create a pipeline. Uh, before we create the pipeline, I mean, let me take you to the SQL. So I'm going to go to the Azure SQL database and here is my Azure SQL database. So let's uh, copy the path for the server name and go to the SSMS. So, here I'm going to connect to this uh, Azure uh, database uh, and uh, SQL authentication, TB user is my username, password, I'm going to provide the password. It's asking me to log in, uh, I'm going to log in. Uh, so I'm going to use my login and uh, hit uh, OK. It's logged in. Uh, now we can see our tech browser database is ready. We do not have any tables uh, as of uh, now. So you can see right there, there is no table. It's taken some time, but uh, we, say, we can see that there is no table. And I'm gonna open a new query, just uh, that's where we are gonna write our query for select. Now, let me take you back to the Azure Data Factory. And uh, one other thing I would like to do, I am gonna go to the firewall and virtual networks here, and I'm gonna allow Azure services and resources to connect to the, or access this server. Why? Because I'm gonna use Azure Data Factory to get the data from this search server. Or actually, in this case, I'm going to load the data to this. So I'm going to give permission. Now, in the Azure Data Factory, what we are going to do, we are going to go to the author. In the author, we are going to go to the pipeline and create the pipeline. There are many ways that you can start the pipeline. Mostly, people create the linked service first and then create the pipeline. In my case, I'm going to walk through the pipeline and create the linked server while I will be working with the pipeline. I'm going to call this a pipeline PL load Excel. And that's... It is ready. Now, there are many things you can do from here. People can create the variables or they can create the parameters. Now, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter. Here, the parameter, I'm going to call this a sheet name. It's going to be uh, an array type of uh, um, uh, parameter, and I'm going to put some values here. In the values of what I want to do, I have to do kind of a JSON type here. So. Uh, this is how our value is going to look like. So we have to have like this, and then uh, we are going to create uh, three sets. Uh, so in each of the set, uh, we will have uh, values. Uh, so first, uh, we have to provide uh, the node uh, such as a sheet name, and then uh, what we are going to do, we have to provide the name. Uh, so if you guys remember that uh, my sheet names are customer, that's our first, uh, and then uh, second part is uh, we are going to have a sheet name, and uh, that is going to be our product and the third and last is our sheet name and uh, that's going to be equal to our order so double quotes around there 
Okay, so this looks all good. This is an array where a sheet name is the, uh, the main uh, uh, call kind of a key and uh, these are the values. Uh, so we can uh, copy, copy from here and uh, let's go back to the pipeline. Uh, here provide that value. Now we have these uh, three values there uh, and what we need to do, we need to loop through those uh, the different sheets. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a for each loop here. So I will bring the for each loop here and then uh, I can go right there, go to the settings. In the setting, uh, what I'm going to do, let me make it a little bigger so you can see what I'm doing here. It, may, it got really big actually. So I have to move this one on the sides. Okay, so here, uh, let me go to settings and this in the items uh, I'm going to go add dynamic content uh, and uh, remember that uh, we have a parameter called sheet name that's what uh, we are going to use it here so for our for each loop is going to go and loop through that uh, parameter values uh, that's the arrow value and has the uh, three values in that uh, now we go inside the for each loop uh, we are going to use a copy activity so I'm going to use copy activity here and uh, now copy data and uh, I will be doing uh, some configuration here go to source and uh, in the source uh, what I'm gonna do here, now it's good. Okay, in this source, uh, I'm gonna go to the new, and first of all, I will be creating a linked service. So, so this is going to be blob storage. So Azure blob storage, that's where our file is. So I'm gonna hit the continue, and then select the Excel file here, uh, and I'm gonna provide the Excel input file, and we are gonna create a linked service. So, so create new, and where select subscription, okay your blob storage account and uh, we do not have any blob storage account as of now so we are going to go back uh, because uh, uh, the file i showed you it is on the uh, my local server so i have to go to storage account and i'm going to create a storage so i'm going to call this storage let me just see what i can call this select my resource group uh, and i call this uh, tech brothers storage that's uh, the name is us and we are going to hit ok and uh, now we create storage once the storage is created we are going to create a container uh, and i'm going to call that container input container and load our excel file uh. so that's uh, the container where uh, every day people can drop file and once the file is dropped a trigger will uh, we can uh, create a trigger even to a uh, storage even based trigger that will trigger our uh, pipeline uh, and that can take that uh, Excel file and load to uh, then we can load the data to different uh, sheets uh, from different sheets to the Azure SQL databases. Uh. Now we go to the containers and here uh, on the containers uh, we are going to create a new container. I'm going to call this the uh, container input uh, create and then uh, now we are all set here and uh, now what we will do we will upload the file uh, now what we are going to do, we are going to navigate to our uh, file and uh, here my file is in the ATF folder and input folder and my Excel file. So hit upload and now we are all good. Let's go back to our Azure Data Factory and now we refresh. Now we have our storage account and then uh, we have a container. Here it's not asking us any container or anything because it's asking us uh, the storage account. So the list link service is uh, uh, to the storage account not to specific uh, a container so then in the next step it will ask you which container you want to use uh, to extract the file see right there it asks me container so i'm going to navigate to the input folder or container and then uh, i can select the file now we hit okay see this file is there so that's why i'm saying that uh, you can always uh, go and use the event based trigger and uh, this uh, file name can be replaced with the file name and uh, we will be good uh, here it has asking you, hey, what is your worksheet uh, mode? Uh, is index or name? So in our case, it's going to be name. And uh, I'm going to call this. Uh, uh, let me see what we have. Here we have those three. But I'm not using any of them because I want to use a dynamic way. So yes, the first row has a header. Correct. Hit OK. Now we are going to go back here and make some configuration because our file name, uh, no sheet name is coming from the parameter, right? From the actually they are coming from the para parameter and then we are need to map that here so i will go and open this again and uh, create our parameter so this parameter is on the uh, data set level so i'm going to call this one uh, uh i can call this a d uh, sheet name so that means the data set level 
uh, sheet name uh, parameter good connection back and here I can use that so now sheet mode uh, is uh, going to be name and uh, here see okay once I click inside then it to this guy comes up and now I can select uh, this sheet name fine now this is all good and I need to go to the pipeline level and here that the D sheet name comes up and that I have to map with the our for each loop so for each loop and if we remember that in for each loop we read the, the value sheet name from our parameter that's our pipeline parameter that has three values so I'm going to use that right there and we are all good let's go to the our sync here and I'm going to create a linked service so Azure SQL database click here create a new link service and I'm going to select the subscription and here is my server name and uh, now select the database name and then finally we have to provide the username and password so I'm going to provide that and our link service will be ready now it is a test is successful hit create now it is asking which table you want to use it uh, I don't want to use any table here because my table name uh, I want exact like my sheet name so I'm gonna hit OK here and the same thing what we have to do here we have to go to the open and here we are going to create a, a parameter that's on our data set level I can call it the different uh, DS uh, uh, table name and uh, what we are gonna go, go do we are gonna go to connection again and here uh, click on edit our schema is gonna be DBO and uh, our uh, table name coming from sheet name that's going to be DS table name right there yes now I go to the pipeline level and that this parameter is showing up right here so I need to map this to our for each loop and in the for each loop to what sheet name because I want my table name exactly like my sheet name this is all good here and now what we need to do uh, we have multiple options here so we can uh, auto create a table if it does not exist uh, if it does exist it's not going to do anything uh, so I'm going to hit that and uh, we should be all good here so you see that uh, uh, it's going to go ahead and read uh, the file from the uh, blob storage and uh, it uh, knows that uh, it has uh, three sheets because we have provided a sheet name list here in the array type of uh, parameter and uh, it's going to loop through those uh, uh, it's going to look through those sheets and load the data to the Azure SQL database um, so that's what it's going to do so let's uh, execute debug okay parameter value should be valid array okay so sheet name uh, close and uh, where we have uh, maybe we made some uh, problem uh, maybe we made a mistake here I don't know which mistake we made here so this is our parameter and then now what's happening here inside the yeah sheet name that's correct inside that uh, what we are doing here in the sync and source uh, we have this uh, we are using item dot sheet name here for, that's coming from our for each in this item dot sheet name that's uh, coming here so this is a table looks good uh, let me see for one more time okay so let's debug again and try to see sheet name parameter value should be valid array so looks like it's not a valid array why so let me go back here and see what happened see right we made a mistake here this guy that's the problem so I'm gonna paste that value here take it go back to the pipeline and here we make put it there now see it's gone it's validation correctly now we should be good to go hit debug and it's showing if you want to change another sheet here in the testing or some values you can use it at the runtime but I'm good with these three uh, sheet names and uh, see for each loop and it's gonna run three times and each uh, sheet should be loaded to the table so it's uh, in the progress right now let's wait for a couple of seconds and see how it goes Finally, our pipeline is completed and we can see that in the for each loop it tells us that there are three items so those three items are our uh, sheet names and uh, that coming from the power parameter and then we can see right there it is loading a uh, different uh, uh, sheets from the blob to the Azure tables so see right there there are two rows and uh, all that let's go back here let's see on the input uh, so we can see Excel source uh, blob storage and uh, recursive 
So let's uh, see on the output side. So it tells data written, data uh, read, connections, and all those are different information, data moment, and uh, yeah, that's a whole lot of, like you can compute and all those are different, how much time it took and everything, and uh, that's uh, right there. So that's okay, and then uh, if you wanna see more detail, like how many rows and all that are written, uh, you can see right uh, there. So uh, pretty neat information right there. So anyways, close it now to test uh, this uh, a whole process that we have to go back to our Azure or SQL database and here we can see that now see three tables has been created depending upon the name of the sheets and the first is customer I'm going to go right click here and see the data so this has should have a couple of records there and the two records just came fine and then we have order table and I'm going to see the order table here so this came correct and then we are going to go to the product and take a look. And that came correct as well. Now, if we go to the order, and I'm a very uh, kind of uh, little bit, I was a little bit worried about the order, like uh, maybe the date and all that will not come correct, but they did. And if you see that uh, all those columns, uh, it uh, took as N worker max. So, that's all right. So maybe I can use this as a staging and then I can have, a, you know, next store procedure where I read from this uh, table and then uh, use uh, uh, convert to the exact uh, date time or whatever I want to do and then validate data and then write to the ex actual tables depending on some, uh, you know, uh, typecast I want to convert and implement some maybe absurd logics so I can use that. So this can be very helpful for your staging and where you need to read multiple files from one Excel file, multiple sheets from one Excel file and load it. And as I was saying that you can always go ahead and create a trigger here. You have to create two parameters here. That's going to be your file name and your folder name because you need to tell in the your copy activity uh, you have to uh, say, you know, you have to map those guys because you have to tell like uh, where the source is uh, and uh, you should know that uh, you need uh, to provide uh, right here. You will use the file name so here and uh, then you can use uh, other information there like folder if the folder does change as well. So you can create uh, a trigger and uh, that can be uh, event based, uh, event story based trigger and uh, once uh, somebody plays the file there, uh, what you will do, it will automatically will uh, uh, start your pipeline and then uh, run it. Uh, so that's you can do. I have all this uh, information in the video where I have shown uh, how to drop the file, how it will trigger, and uh, what uh, you know parameters it take, and how to you know map those parameters from the trigger to the pipeline. So all the information is there. So watch that uh, event storage based uh, trigger in my playlist. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope uh, this video will help. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.